Laurie, you've worked in a number of roles at Wolves, including time at Wolves Foundation, but can you explain what your remit is now? Yeah, essentially, myself and John Hunter Barrett, we split the academy head of academy role. So the traditional role is split across two people, which gives me the opportunity to really focus on uh, education and, and player care and the support mechanisms that we have around the players that's kind of off the pitch. We also look after all of our administration and operations functions, so a big remit that allows me and John to kind of lead the department together. It seems to be a really exciting period for Wolves women, so let's start with a few questions we've had about them. Uh, do you plan to keep using old Wolfroonians? How suitable are those facilities? It's a really interesting question. Um, if Obviously at the moment we're in, in kind of limbo because we don't know what league the women's team are going to be playing in next season. If we move into the championship, then there are lots of kind of ground regulations that perhaps at the moment, as it currently stands, the Old, Old Wolf Stadium doesn't meet, but we're working really closely with them. They've been a fantastic partner for us this season. So we're exploring lots of options. I don't want to commit to exactly where we're going to be next season because we don't know what league we're going to play in. But certainly uh, we're really proud of the relationship we've had with, with Old Wolves this season. And a sort of follow-up question to that is, would there be a time when you consider an academy stadium, a sort of self-contained area like that? I think that it's definitely something that we should consider as, as both the academy and the women's teams progress. Obviously, trying to create something that is bespoke to Wolves um, gives us a real good home and um, gives us the opportunity to develop and, and attract players and retain players. So I think it's definitely something that, that we'd want to consider in the future. I think the Compton Park, as it is at the moment, doesn't really lend itself to, to creating that here. And, and Wolverhampton's quite a densely populated city so there's lots of challenges with that but I think it's something that we definitely want to consider for the future. So there'd be quite a few infrastructure changes if Wolves did continue progressing all the way up to the WSL for example? Yeah so obviously we've made lots of progression with the integration of the academy and I think one of the things that we wanted to be really clear on was we didn't want to create a separate women's team we wanted to have full integration with the academy utilize the resources utilize the best practice that works for the boys identify which bits can work for the girls and, and vice versa and I think that's what that's our USP at the moment and um, we're different if you look at the the more championship clubs that we've got that we're comparing ourselves against they don't create they've not created this we've created this so I think more integration is important there are going to be some roles that need to be female specific there's going to be some roles that can be across both genders and I think as a management team we're working through that at the moment so it's a really exciting time for us. This might be a question for a few years down the line but if Wolves ever did go professional how would you keep hold of the players that have good jobs, for example, or would you be sort of operating in a different market of players? I think I think it is a really good question. I think at the moment, in terms of the championship and our next kind of step, then we have to um, be really respectful of the fact that female footballers, it's not always been a career path for them. You know, they've had to go away and, and create their own career path. So we've got players in our kind of um, team at the moment that are uh, teachers or work in hospitals, and we've got to be respectful of that because they're still good footballers that can play at that level. So. I think whatever model we want to create, it's got to be both. We've got to make sure that we have space for those that want to be professional and perhaps moving towards that and they see this as a career. And those ones that are perhaps um, have been playing the game for a little bit longer, give them the opportunity and recognise it's not going to be the same for both, but perhaps we can get good outcomes with both of them. Would you consider streaming the Wolves women matches like you do with the under 23s? We get this question a lot and have lots of conversations internally about it. I think it's about a balance. Obviously, we've streamed some games. We've streamed some games in COVID, which got really good um, you know, viewing figures. And then that's led to really strong supporters that have come to CKW this season. You know, We've got the highest attendance in the league at, for, for our level of football. So I think we've got to get the balance right. If we stream everything, does that mean supporters can't come to the game and vice versa? So. I think it's something if we're in the championship, you know, the exposure is going to be bigger from a media perspective and, and streaming will definitely be on the cards. But I wouldn't want to commit to it being every game because I want people to come to the games, I want people to build relationships. I think the game that we had at Molyneux recently, you know, the amount of fans that stayed behind to build relationships with the players, that's what we want. You know, we want people to, if you can't see it, you can't be it. And I want female young boys and girls to, to see our female players as role models and we want to make sure they've got connectivity. So I think we've got to get the balance right. And in terms of attendances, we've had one question about would you provide a travel club to go to away games as well? Or is it more just about getting the home attendances? I think, again, that's a, that's a progression piece. You know, if we can still play in the city, if we have to play outside of the city, I've got to try and move the fan base and support that. And a travel club is a great way to do that. So the whole kind of um, infrastructure that we've created means that the ticketing department have been really supportive of the women's programme. So a travel club is definitely something we've wanted to develop in the future. And would you consider staging Wolves women's matches at Molyneux on the same day as men's games, for example? Could something be worked on on that basis? It's a really interesting question because we've had lots of discussions internally about 
um, the practicalities of doing it. Um, I think we're tasked with all the time as a football club to be creative. That's certainly a creative way to, to get more um, fans for the female team. You know, I went to the 100 last summer and I saw both the, the male and female things. I thought what a great um, experience that was and great exposure for the female cricketers. So I think it's definitely something we should consider uh, and, and look to do and, and you know, think about how we can be creative to create more supporters and create the right environment for, for the women's team to continue the success. How practical do you think it would be to, to facilitate that? I think it's a challenge, if I'm honest. I think um, Premier League regulations, you know, access, particularly some of the COVID restrictions have obviously eased, but there's still some red zone access and stuff. So I think the practicalities will be challenging, if I'm being really honest, and the gap between the games that you might need to have might like lose the appeal. But I definitely think maybe we need to be creative with the 23s. Maybe that's the actual angle of approaching. Because one of the things that we want to strive for next season is to get more people watching the 23s as well. So maybe we need to do both. OK, uh, let's have a few questions about the academy structure in general. I mean, is it almost a separate business operating under the Wolves banner? I think it's, a, it's an interesting way to put it. Uh, obviously, we're fully integrated within the football club, but ultimately we've got to be sustainable. We've got to make sure that you know we're, we're developing players that allow us to financially be sustainable, whether they're going to go into our first team, which is the first outcome, or whether they can they can move on and, and create careers in the games. So I think yes and no is is a really like strange answer to give, but yes, we you know we operate do as independently as we can, but still working with with the first team in terms of our player pathway, etc. Yeah, we spoke with John about player pathways and the opportunities that are emerging all the time now. But could you answer a question about the players who don't make it and what provisions are made for them when they drop out of the academy system? We've, we've invested really heavily in this over the last couple of seasons, particularly since I've been here around um, what our player care structure looks like, because we need to make sure that whatever time that players spend at Wolves is something I'm really passionate about, is that they leave with a really good experience. So whether it's a season, four seasons or 12 seasons, they need to make sure that they know what they leave with. So if they're not going to leave with being a professional footballer at Wolves, they need to, we need to make sure that we tell them what they have left with. So the experiences that we've got. So we recently had a squad that travelled out to Dubai and I was speaking to one of the young, young players before travel and that was his seventh tour with us seven different countries we've taken him to amazing life experiences that we give them so we need to make sure we do that and I think if we get it right when they're with us if we get their education right and get the right balance right we support them to you know become people first I think as they leave they'll be a lot more robust to to, to kind of cope with perhaps the disappointment that might follow because we know that that's likely to be the case for a lot of them I think then in terms of our exit strategy you know they are always a Wolves graduate they're part of an, our alumni forever so we, we're always going to be there to be connected connected with us we want to bring players back in to talk to players about different journeys and we've got some really good examples of that so I think we've worked really hard on that and I think that's going to start to come to fruition in the next few years. On the education point how much emphasis is on the players continuing their education you know historically it hasn't always been a priority at, at academy levels and we've seen players not get the education they perhaps need. Yeah. I think it's a massive priority for us now. You know, we've got a big department um, that looks to bespoke the education programme. I think historically we've always just assumed that if they're playing football, they want to study sport. And that's not the case. You know, I want our education provision to be bespoke and be individualised, just like our playing and technical provision is. So, you know, if a player wants to be a DJ, then I want to support them to do that. So I think we've got to make sure that we work really hard to, to get that so the players see it as important. But we have a, a real good culture between me and John that the coach isn't king. You know, football is not king here. It's about people first. And therefore, them getting their education is really, really important. So whether we're supporting them when they come out on school release to, to make sure we're, we're giving them the education that they've perhaps missed or perhaps when they're 19, 20 to do a degree, which some of our players are doing now. So it's really, really important to us. Is that perhaps coming from the Dutch model uh, in, in the sense of giving the, the player more rounded um, qualities? I think so, yeah. I think we can learn a lot from, from the continent, really. But I think it's about making sure that you get to know the boy or, or the female player and now that we've got. But making sure you get to know the person. You know, what do they do? What interests them? How do we then make sure that education is not a chore? Um, education is actually something that excites them. And to do that, you've got to bespoke it to the individual. We're here in the Dome, which is well used by the academy players. What's the next stage in terms of infrastructure and developing the academy further? Yeah, so we obviously want to develop our, our spaces that we use every day. So we've spent, we've relayed the AstroTurf, we've developed pitch four and, and the other surrounding grass pitches. Now it's about what does the building need? How do we make sure that the player works for everybody? So I'm really keen to ask the players what space they need, what space they want, you know, space for them to, to be, be themselves, space for them to work in, what does our classroom um, kind of space need to be. So I think it is it's really important that we do that. You know, we want to make sure that it's an environment that allows people to be creative 
creative and to develop it and is welcoming and and we want to make sure that our parents are part of that as well and it's been a challenge for us over covid um, but i think we're coming out as we come out the other side of it what we have learned is to utilize what we've got better and i think that's our, now our kind of philosophy going forward is okay so how can we extend the building? Obviously, that, that's a real financial commitment from the football club. So we've got to make sure that we're doing it for the right reasons and at the right time. But definitely a really exciting time for the academy at the moment. You know, we've had great success on the pitch, great success off the pitch. And I think the building and development is, is the next thing that we need to look now look to do.